it can be so frustrating when your overlocker produces stitches like this. You've come to the right place. I'm going to show you how to fix that on this Jonomi overlocking machine. You'll need your screwdriver. We're going to open the machine. Because we've got the stitching on that fabric, we know that the timing isn't a problem. The chains are being produced. So the very good chance it just needs a good cleaning a little bit of tlc a bit of oil and we'll put it back together i need to make sure that there is no debris in there all the fluff is out the feed dogs are working properly and everywhere is oil and this involves me taking the plastic cover off so i'm going to work my way around the machine starting at the back remove all the screws and then as i go around to the front i'm going to need to make sure that i take the base screws off that's just going to hold the plastic cover at the top to the bottom as i do this i'm going to work around the machine and i will point some things out to you to help you understand my thought process as to why i might be looking for some particular things so i'm not just turning the hand wheel i'm going to be looking for a particular thing um, I'm going to make sure that certain uh, visual checks are made. Usually, just doing a visual check on a machine is enough. And it comes with experience and a background knowledge. So um, if it's something that you want to get into repairing machines for other people, or if this is solely the machine that you want to work with because it's one that you own, then uh, stick with me. I'm going to highlight some of the relevant parts as we go through the um, process. I like to make sure that I have a clear workspace when I'm working on machines so I don't lose anything. For example, things happen and you just got to be prepared and it's fine um, as long as you are ready for it. <laughs> Now, I like to add a little bit of support to my machines when I'm working on them. So I'm going to get a nice, clean, soft padding. So a little um, mat that I've made. I'm going to rest that behind the machine so I can tilt it back and rest that. It's going to protect the machine. It's going to protect my table. But it's also, um, because it's a cushion, it works with the uneven, unsteady shape of the overlocker and gives good solid support as I take all the screws out. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the screws as well as I take them out. Just make sure you keep them all nice and safely and you'll see that some of them are um, a little bit different from each other. All right, I'm going to grab these two screws. I'm going to make an observation, just show you something. Let's have a look inside all these screw holes. That's got a metal rim. That one's plastic inside there. Can you see? In there, it's metal. In there, it's plastic. And in the last one, we're going to have a quick look. That's got a metal rim as well. Okay, so the ones that go in the metal holes are the ones on the left-hand side. They've got a narrower thread on the screw the wider thread on the screw on the right hand side that's for the plastic holes now we've got all the screws out so you've loosened the screw at the front you've taken all the base screws out we've taken all the ones at the back out we can start to separate the front from the back, the, pla the plastic cover of the front and off the back. Now you can see it's quite tricky to do. It needs quite um, a bit of force and a bit of manipulating. There are a number of clips that are holding the front to the back. So it's like cracking a nut really. You've just got to be really, really careful. Um, don't use a nutcracker. Um, be really, really careful because it's hard to know whether the clips are um, hooking the front and the back, whether it's just coming from the back to the front or 
they change machine to machine. But with a quick snap and a bit of bravery, they do come apart. Now what makes um, genome machines feel really robust is that they put these screws into the cover from the metal chassis. And you can see inside this machine, it's all metalwork and it's good solid metalwork. This stuff doesn't bend easily. You can throw it across the room. I'm not telling you you should. And it won't break. It's really good quality made machine. And I'm quite pleased with it. Um, I'm just placing that screw in the plastic cover so that I don't lose it. Okay, I can do some visual effects to check the timing of the needles to the loopers. Um, so we've got one overhead. We're going to just uh, get in and just make sure there's a good enough space between the loopers and the needles. And that the eye of the looper, the upper looper, is going to meet at the point of each needle as it curves around to catch the loop. So if I bring the camera this way around, you can see the space. Now you're looking for um, a small gap there, um, which might be a bit clearer on here. Just make sure nothing is hitting anything. Okay, so the visual check is flat, fine. We've not had any complaints about timing, so I know um, the timing is fine because I've seen it on the stitch out I've already done. I'm just making sure that there's no metal work hitting anywhere else. Um, and as long as all of that is fine, we really just need to give the machine a good clean. Now a toothbrush is brilliant for this because it really has some really strong nylon bristles which are great for attracting dirt and dust. So um, brush that along the feed dogs and make sure you get everything out. Just replacing the needles, I always give it a fresh new pair of needles. I'll always give the needles that were in the machine back because I don't know how old or new they are um, or if they are a, a specific type, I don't really check. So I just pin them back into uh, a little swatch of fabric and put them back in with the machine. Um, just check everywhere. It's a visual check as well as a good clean. Just keeping an eye on everything, making sure everything lines, lines up. Now, one of the things that people forget to clean behind, and I've seen this on so-called machines that have been serviced and I've purchased, the knife never gets a proper clean. So just push that knife out of the way and give it a good clean underneath and behind it. Um, and then you're going to get an oily rag. I always have an oily rag with me, wiping everything down, making sure I coat all the metal work with um, a little amount of oil. You don't want it sopping wet um, or saturated in oil. You just need a, a light coating and an oily rag. You can see that the rag that I have just has a couple of drops of sewing machine oil on it. So... Um, Nylon brushes are great for this because of the attraction uh, to dust and dirt. So they, they just get attracted to the bristles with all that friction and it helps to give the machine a good clean. So you can see all of that gunk in there before um, we have really given it a good clean.
to pay attention to this shaft here you've got to make sure everywhere is clean and dust free so it takes a little bit of a an effort and um not too much of an effort just a little effort but once you've got it opened you just may as well make sure that everything is lint free brushing it all down sometimes if it's really bad i'll get the vacuum cleaner out on a light suction mode you can put a stocking on the end so if anything does get sucked up it'll get um stopped by the filter of the stocking um which is a pro tip there um but do make sure it's on a light suction so i've got my oily rag i'm just going around the oil uh, the oily rag helps to attract any dirt and dust and it cleans off all the old grease all the old oil and any excess oil Now, once we've got rid of everything that's old, we can add new, clean, fresh oil. Now, you can see this pot is full of uh, machine oil and it's clear. Um, I should do a video on this, actually, because there is a collection of oils that I've got. Some of them have yellowed. Some of them got sediment at the bottom and I can identify which one's which. I think the key thing is just to keep your oil uh, in a cool dark place because the sunlight does discolor oil and machines are great because they're covered up in their plastic covering so the oils never get damaged um, I've dotted oil around anywhere that's moving just put some oil in those parts and then just run the machine by hand and just wipe away any excess um, oils that are dripping because you do want um, a good coverage but you don't want a deluge. You don't need oodles and oodles. And there's got to be a safe way of doing this. Now I'm going to do something a little bit strange. I'm going to give the machine a little bit of a shake. So I'm just checking it over. And the reason I'm doing this, it's all very secure. Genomi machines are brilliantly made. Um, I will give them credit for that. Um, giving it a good shake will hopefully release any broken needles that I've missed or any screws that have fallen in there. Um, giving it a good um opportunity to get rid of anything we don't want in there anything unsightly i had a moth in one of the genome machines years ago it was about an inch big so i don't know how it managed to squeeze into the vent but that was the only way it could have done that um it was quite interesting actually so um yeah now the thing about putting this machine back together, you can't forget that little screw that was in the machine on the front because I won't allow me to position this piece back in place. So you have to take that screw out, which will remind me to then screw it back in. So make sure you're using the correct screws. So you can see I've got them all piled up on the left hand side there. But remembering what I showed you earlier, make sure you've got the wide thread for the plastic um, screw um, holes and you're using the narrow ones for where it's um, a screw going into a metal um, hole. Now here's another pro tip for you. Um, use a magnetised screwdriver if you've got them because when you're using fiddly, when you're inserting fiddly screws like this, um, that screw can fall quite a number of times. This screwdriver isn't really magnet, uh, magnetized. I got a sewing machine magnet and rubbed it against the tip of the screwdriver a little bit. So it's got a little bit of magnetism to it. But if you buy the pre-magnetized ones, they're quite strong. Okay, so you can see all those clips that we were struggling with at the start of the video. You 
got three on this side you need to just carefully manipulate them because you don't actually want to break them and um, they can snap into i've opened machines before where somebody's previously uh, snapped at them Now I remember um, years ago when I first started putting these looper doors back on at uh, the front of a machine, the spring can be quite a tricky thing to do. So just watch when you do this. If you don't set it up correctly, that door will keep springing back closed. And it's so fiddly. It took me a while to perfect this technique. So just unhook the spring and then you can insert the screws very, very easily. Take your time with it and don't be alarmed if it sort of juts out. Okay, great. So that's it. That's the machine all nicely cleaned. It's all been oiled. There was quite a lot of dust. I know it doesn't look like it, but actually for a machine um, like this inside the feed dogs, there was quite a build up of uh, dirt or you know fluff and that just slows the feed dogs down so you need to make sure you clean under the needle plate regularly what i'm doing now is just setting the machine back up to factory settings so on a genome the overlock tensions usually sit at a three um i've not seen any other number so they always calibrate their tension settings to three Make sure that you've got your differential feed set at one. So that's a ratio of one to one on the front feed dogs and the back feed dogs. And your stitch length is going to be set at three. Now, don't forget to wipe um, a little drop of oil on the uh, needle plate. So that, again, it just gives it a protective coating. You don't want it to feel greasy in your hand. So that oily rag, um, I probably put two or three drops on that before I get started using it. So I get a clean cloth when I start work 
and then just add a couple of drops of oil on it before I start wiping all the metal work down. It just is a protective coating. Um, they don't use the best quality metal on overlockers and they do tend to rust. Now I'm going to use the um, needles that are um, recommended on the front of this machine because my customer asked me to use those. So I've used the special ones for her in this instance. Typically, I would just put a universal size 80 in both cases and that tends to work on everything that I want to sew. So I'm going to start threading up the machine, make sure that the cups are the right way around. These are moon thread. Um, the reason you make sure that they're right way around because the thread will actually untwist the right way. Having worked in a cotton mill, um, I see good reason why to do that. So um, just make sure you stand them up the right way around as you start threading up your machine. The eagle-eyed viewer may have already noticed that I forgot to put the uh, lamp cover on. So um, just check it's all okay. Give it a once over. Don't forget that clip on the side and it fits in nicely. And then just tighten the screw. So you didn't need to remove the screw for the uh, this one. You just loosened it. And there we go. Machine's all set and ready to sew. Almost. Let's thread up the tensions. Now, as much as I like the quality of this machine, I really don't like the threading mechanism of the loopers. They are an, an absolute nightmare. So you've got to fiddle around, making sure the thread goes underneath that way. Then you get back into this way. You've got to locate the looper. You've got to be able to um, be quite good at seeing the looper hole, sort of the slot there. And you saw that the thread goes in, but then I've got to get it back to the other side and that's fiddling around with that. And then where's that thread gone? Got to try and locate that thread. Honestly, it's an absolute logistical nightmare. I don't know what's going on, but I can't see that thread. Maybe I've given up. Where is it? Right, get my head in the way because I can't see. <laughs> right, try that again. So set it all back up. Feed it through again. Try and pass it to the other side. And let's see if I can push it with my finger and catch it. I'm hoping that by doing this, it's gonna fall into place and you can't see because those dials are in the way. Let's try it again. So it's fallen out, try again. Okay, I managed it somehow. I don't know where that footage is. I think I must have switched the recording off, but I did manage to do it. I have got the threading off this machine up um, and you can find that yourself. Um, sorry, sounded rude. I can put the link in the description below and you can, um, or in the top corner, and you can go and find how to thread this machine up. It's similar to the one I bought for Jasmine. Get that tree right up to the top, all those threads. Let's snip them, get them all tidy. You want to make sure that they're separated, that they each and every one is separated. And if you've got the presser foot up, then they will flow through the machine nice and easily.
all the threads underneath the foot, foot presser, uh, press the foot up and all those threads flow lovely. Right, plug the machine in, switch it on and action stations. Let's see if we've improved on the stitch. So everything's factory settings. I've got a stretch fabric. Uh, the customer gave me a jersey. She's asked me to put stretch needles in and you can see on the front of that machine, it's asked for And that's for stretch fabric, not jersey. Four way stretch. And that stitch is almost perfect. Just need to adjust the knife a little bit. And it's stitching beautifully. Much better than the uh, chaos that we had before. There we go. All in all, a good job done. So it was in really good clean condition, just the feed dogs really um, forgotten about. So make sure that you clean inside the machine, remove the needle plate from time to time and give those feed dogs a good clean. Oil here and there, because this machine was stitching. <laughs> let me know how you feel um, you get on with servicing your machines subscribe to the channel if you haven't already that really helps us to grow and produce more videos like this thank you very much for watching and i will see you soon